no matter why you forge, when you pick up your first tool, your idea starts to take life. Every artist, every blacksmith surrounds themselves with both capability and possibility. It all starts with the tool. Every surface gives shape. Every new technique gives new form. It doesn't end until you brush away the scale and set down your hammer. Whether you forge a motion in the iron arc, or you reforge the past in your life, who is there for you? We have hammers in every continent, in thousands of shops, and we are relentlessly learning and growing so we can put the best tool in your hand. My name is Andy Phillips and in today's uh, Big Blue tutorial we'll be talking about raising a bolt and our bolt eyes. Uh, now the bolt eyes really open up a new world of possibilities with your machine because you're, you're not just forging, uh, you're forming um, and it allows you to really add volume to your work. Uh, whether it be just making a simple vessel like what we're going to be doing today uh, or adding plate to, uh, to a railing or making the base for a fireplace stand uh, there are really a lot of possibilities with this and it's a fairly simple process once you once you get it down uh, it's you know it's not very hard at all but uh, so first the first step here uh, is to uh, to align the dies and go ahead and torque those in. Uh, you want to make sure that they're nice and tight. But they're fairly easy to align. Uh, you want to keep them clean. I use a, a little brush there. Uh, they do tend to collect scale as time goes on. You don't want to force that into your work. That that dish is is terrible for that. But just keep them clean. Uh, now, raising a bowl, uh, you're you're typically going to do this type of work cold. Um, and you're working with a fairly small piece of material, so if you're if you're out of line with the dies, uh, it'll really push you around. It'll push it back into place. So what we're going to do is slow down the hammer, um, and you know even though you can't avoid that, uh, you know the dies knocking you around a little bit, you can make it so that each hit is further apart. And we'll raise the uh, the primary valve all the way up and drop the secondary valve all the way down and now the hammer has to cycle between those two valves and it makes it hit very slowly um, so as it hits you have a lot of time in between hits to align the bowl to the to the dies now another trick you can use and you can use this in your normal forging as well is to turn down the air pressure uh, normally our machine runs at 140 pounds and we're going to turn it down to 80 for this video uh, a 155 will operate as low as 50 pounds and it, it makes the hammer very sluggish and when it comes down instead of just hitting uh, the lower the air pressure is the more it'll squeeze that material it'll, it'll let the head rest there for a little while um, and that can also help to align uh, align the material to the dies and let you know sort of where you need to go. So here's our blank and you want to go ahead and get all of your texturing done if you're going to do that beforehand. Clean up your edges, pre-polish your edges because after this bowl is raised it's a lot harder to, uh, to get a nice uniform edge and again this is a, a 13 inch disc and I think that's a good size uh, vessel to practice with. Um, you know you can raise a, a, a very large uh, bowl on this um, and of course you can do very small stuff as as well so but all right so you can see there I'm starting in the center and I'm working my way out um, I go from the center and uh, and then I start spinning it uh, and that allows you know that you work your way all, all the way out to the edge and you can see I've marked this material as well so I know when I've made a full revolution I move out uh, one more you know about a half of the thickness of the dies. Um, now, it, with this, it's very important to be meticulous. Um, you have to maintain balance as you're raising uh, this bowl because if you if you get off a little bit, um, it'll start to potato chip, and uh, you can correct that some with the bowl dies. But if you get too far out, you'll end up with you know with that taco shape, and you have to take it and. Uh, uh, to, a, to the anvil or to uh, to a big plate and basically straighten it back out or try to bend that out of it because the bull dies can only can only do so much but so starting very slowly you know you don't want to you don't want to move too much too fast um, you have to be 
aggressive enough, but if you're too aggressive, you'll lose that balance. Um, and that just comes with practice and time. Uh, so, you know, once you get all the way out to the edge, start in the center and do the same process again. And uh, there's a really simple rule for raising. And, uh, you know, it's almost too simple to, to be true, but it, it works because you'll find times where you're looking at this going, where do I, where do I hit it? Where do I need to work it to straighten it out? And the rule is to basically just look for the high spots and hit the high spots. Um, and uh, if you do that, um, usually you'll bring it back into form. Okay. Um, so you can see I've, uh, I've made several passes here. Uh, a typical bowl might take anywhere from uh, 7 to upwards of 20 or 30 passes, depending on how, how smooth you want to get it. Uh, and don't worry about smoothness much until the until the very end. You know, the main thing you want to pay attention to is is the balance, making sure that you're uh, you're not coming out of your sphere. So now that I've got it to about the height that I want, I'll drop the uh, I'll drop the stroke down so that I can get a lot more beats per minute, and that'll help me to planish out all of the all of the big hammer marks. And doing the same the same process, and you can see it's a little bit harder on you there. Even even at this stage, uh, you know you don't have a lot of material to hold on to, so um, it can really kick you around. And the last step is to go around the edge of the bowl. And uh, even if the even if the dish itself isn't perfect, uh, if you have that edge round, it looks a whole lot better. Um, so and the. Once the, once the bowl's raised, I like to go back in and make a little flat spot. It doesn't take a whole lot, but just enough to, uh, to make it so if that were sitting on somebody's table and it gets bumped, you know, it may, it may roll over, but it's going to come back to center. It has a place to stop, um, you know, and you can go back in and, and actually flatten that completely if you wanted to. Um, so, now, you know, with work like this, your finishes, your finishes everything, and this is a this is a really simple bowl. It has no texture on it. It'll receive no paint. It's just going to be wax. So I I just go in and, and sand it, and you can see there there's a, there's a little bit of texture from the the bowl dies themselves, and that's kind of a neat a neat look. Um, but uh, you know, it's and it's good to experiment. Uh, I'm sure you'll come up with all all kinds of different ways to make them, but even just taking a simple piece of plate uh, is very straightforward and, uh, and has a good look to it. So, the real question is, what do you do with all these beautiful hand-forged bowls that you've made? Well, you put stuff in them, of course. At the end of the day, I like to, uh, to empty all my pockets into a beautiful hand-forged bowl. So, uh, I appreciate you watching this video. Uh, I hope it's been helpful. Uh, subscribe and follow us on Facebook. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below and, uh, and we'll get back with you. Um, uh, again, thank you for watching and uh, have, have a good day and happy forging.